we're here today because we're going out for a special lunch at the Key Restaurant, which is a three-headed restaurant located in Sydney, right at the overseas passenger terminal. This place has beautiful views of the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Opera House, and with the changeover menu two years ago, I'm super excited to finally try this new menu out. So, shall we get started? Now before we got started with the actual menu, we were served a mini dish which sort of looked like a mini pot plant with a mountain of peas. Okay, I know it's not even on the menu, but this was an amazing snack. As we munched through the pot of peas in our mouths, it was so obvious that the chef took so much care with each individual pea. Like they were consistent in size and each one tasted so fresh. Now this first dish was just amazing. Guys, I'm gonna warn you, this place is one of our top favorite restaurants in Sydney because of how amazing each dish is. And you'll see why as you keep watching. So we were served with long tweezers to eat these with, which shows how delicate the food was. And the presentation of this dish just took me back to the beach. Simply a really refreshing feeling. This dish was very creamy. The smoked eel was very subtle, which was great. And the addition of the Lucetia caviar added a hint of saltiness and brings that ocean water freshness to your mouth, which is really unique. In between, we got served crumpets with smoked salmon roe, which is another dish on the menu. These crumpets were served in a dish resembling a toaster and was beautifully golden brown. It was definitely midway between crunchy and soft, which I thought was perfect. This was such a joyful dish because it's a mix of luxury from the salmon row and playful childhood from the crumpets. The salmon row brought a very fresh salty taste to the dish and the butter light cream was very neutral light taste, but very creamy at the same time. Now this one was a very light dish. The crab meat was minimal, but was enough to add a decent crab flavor to the broth. And the white asparagus was delicious. It was almost as if it wasn't even asparagus. I just couldn't tell if you hadn't told me this was asparagus. This dish literally made me scream inside when I saw the noodles. It was a pleasant surprise. So much flavor into what looked like such a simple noodles dish, but all that flavor packed into the butter amazed me. By now, the menu starts to progress more to the poultry side. I did really enjoy the slow cooked pig jowl and the salami in one dish. Although the pig jowl was quite fatty, which I'm not too much of a huge fan of, but those who really liked that richness, fatty taste from meat, I think this one would have ticked the box. Now the duck was cooked perfectly, but what got us so intrigued was the samphire. Samphire is an edible succulent that looks slim, has noted stems with a slight resemblance to an asparagus. It was quite clever to have these as part of the dish because when eaten, these samphires deliver a salty taste which gives you that rich flavour into the dish. Now we then progress to desserts which is always exciting. Here we have the white coral which resembles a coral, literally, and looks like it's of a hard texture which seems quite hard to break. But lucky for us diners, we get given a spoon to go smashing. The moment that spoonful of coral pieces landed in our mouths, it literally melted and I still can't seem to comprehend what happened, but it did. It just literally melts so softly in your mouth. It's incredible.
And then as you dig in, there's this lovely ice cream hidden underneath, which is of slight berry flavor. Now, this, as the name suggests, is meant to resemble a cow print. Also, this dish is eaten using a spoon, which is especially made from buffalo horn. The chocolate biscuits on top were super, super thin and was so tasty. It definitely helped added some texture and crunch to the dish. And then we ended not with petite fours, but petite twos, more like it. A very cool and tasty dish which is made to look like walnuts in its shells. So when you throw in exquisite views of the Sydney Opera House and interplay of textures and colours brought to life through the food dishes, with every detail being thoughtfully considered, then you know this is the place to dine at, especially for those special events you've been wanting to celebrate. So go dine at the Key and you'll see why the Key remains at the forefront of Sydney's fine dining scene. But till next time, um, I'll see you then. Bye.